Rub up your engines! Okay, two for one here. We got an oil leaky Nissan Sentra. I'm gonna show you how to figure out what's wrong and fix it. And number two, I'm gonna talk about the car itself. Now the guy just bought this Nissan Sentra for 1800 bucks. Now everybody knows I'm not a Nissan fan, but this is basic transportation. You can see it's got a ding on it, chunks a little bit off, but it still runs pretty good. And one of the reasons it does is because it's a 1994. Back in the day, Nissan made some decent vehicles, right? Renault took over Nissan, and they didn't really start to ruin the company for six or seven years. This is long before they bought them, and they're actually pretty good vehicles. Now, this is a regular automatic transmission, not a CVT, still shifts good. And this is an old style Nissan four cylinder engine. It's got a distributor, it is fuel injected, and they're actually really good engines. This one still runs good, doesn't burn oil. And indeed, back in the day, Nissan did make them much bad it is not a bad car even though it's got 160,300 miles which is actually a low mileage for a 94 30 years old right you're talking about a 30 year old car which is a reasonably economy cars i mean the ac still works it's got automatic transmission with overdrive and hey as old as this look how good the cloth interior is held up that's why cloth is good if you want to keep things forever even the door cards are still in pretty good shape. It's kind of amazing. Well, start her up. Still sounds good. Look, it's a racing soundtrack. She's got a hole in the muffler. Eventually, it's going to need a muffler. But then again, this is Tennessee. They don't do emissions testing. So you can drive it a long time. But the problem with this is it's leaking engine oil. Now, the owner's a big fan of mine. So he changed the oil. And he put AT205 reseal. And it stopped leaking for like three weeks. But then he went driving in the country up big hills and zooming real fast. And now it's leaking a whole bunch again. So we're going to find exactly where it's leaking from. And for that, we get leak detecting dye. And we pour the engine oil. Of course, everything got to have a seal on it. So we got to break that, take that crap up. But this is a one shot usage. So you pour the whole thing in. So after you pour the whole thing, you start it. Drive around the block 10, 15 minutes. Now I road tested it and here's the trick. The hood doesn't like to open. You pull on the hood opener and nothing happens. They, they won't open. So what you do is beat it. Not pops open. I use UV leak dye because it's the easiest, simplest, quickest thing to do. If you're trying to go by sight alone, first you'd have to clean everything off, all the engine, transmission, everything whistle clean, then see what part's getting greasy, right? I don't have to do any of that. You put the leak dye in, it glows when you put a UV light on. As soon as I shine my UV light on it, it'll show you where the leak is coming from. You don't have to clean anything up. So now we've done that. Let's jack it up and look underneath. Up it goes. Then we're gonna jack stand. Jack it a little higher so it fits better. There we go. Crawl under. Look at this guys. Turn the light on. It's crawling green like mad. Coming from top of the engine. So it's gonna need at least a front main crank seal. So I got a front main seal from AutoZone. Good take it apart. So I'll pop off the hub cap. Take the wheel off. What a guess. Got it right first time. Off it goes. Sealed behind the crank here, so we gotta take the fan belts off. So we'll loosen this one. This is the tensioner. Then we loosen the bottom. The belt will come off. It's that easy for this one. We can do it with a finger now. We just keep spinning it till it's loose enough and the belt will come off. You can see it's getting looser now. A little bit more. You need a lot of slack. Is that enough slack? Yes it is. Okay that belt's off. And the alternator belt on the top. You loosen this bolt. Then we can loosen the front and slide it in. Then with the 12 millimeter like I say. Not much working room here but it goes on the front. You loosen that a whole bunch and it'll slide forward. And you can see with a giant pry bar, you can easily pry it forward. There it goes. It should have enough slack now. Go back down here. We can see it's got more slack. Now we gotta take the big bolt off here. These are loose enough to get it off. Let's stick it on. This cast is 27 millimeter. Now it's hard to get these off, so I'm using an electric impact. As you can see, take it right off. Slide this off, wiggle the out of it. There we go. And the seal's right here. Now, how do you get the seal out? They're at a weird angle. So you get a seal puller like this, right? Big handle. You put it in here and it should pop right out. You get it in the groove. 
and you pull it out. There's the old worn out seal. They wear out over time. Look, it's got cracks and everything in it. Here's the new seal, perfectly smooth. Stuff a big socket like this that fits over the edge of it to push it in. Then push the seal in, then push your big socket on and tap it. Now you can see it's seated in here good. All the same depth, and we'll put it back together. Then we get the bolt, put it back in. Nice and tight with our impact wrench. You don't want it coming off, and you really need an impact wrench, because if you just use a regular wrench, this will keep spinning. The impact wrench will get it nice and tight. Then we'll tighten up all the fan belts. And of course, before we're done, putting all that together, let's start it and see if it stopped leaking. Now, the big question to you might be, why did the sealer work? You saw the old seal. It was cracked with rips in it. That sealer did work for a short time, but the cracks are too big. Then you have to replace the seal. Just thank goodness it was a front main seal, an easy job versus the rear main seal where we would have had to pull the entire transmission off the car to fix it. So we got the tire on, put the hub cap on. It's a universal hub cap, so I guess it doesn't matter which way it goes. And we're done. So what have we learned? Well, an old 94 Nissan Sentra can still be an excellent work car. He only paid 1800 bucks for it. It runs good. And now it's not leaking oil. Let's just pray the rear main seal lasts quite a bit longer because then you got to pull the tranny and that is a giant job. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Randy Vasquez said, Scotty, have you noticed some low cost gas stations selling regular gas at less than 87 octane? How low can you go before it harms the car? Depends on the car. Modern cars you can run on just about anything because the computer compensates for absolutely everything. You would have less power, you would have less horsepower, but it would still run okay if you had a more modern day car, right? Now, I'll give you a perfect example. If you get a modern Ford EcoBoost four-cylinder Mustang turbo, right? But it puts out like 325 horsepower if you run it on premium expensive gasoline. But if you run it on regular gasoline, it'll run perfectly fine, but then it only has like 285 horsepower. So it all depends on what you want. Most cars will run perfectly fine. Modern cars are set up, their computers can adjust, but you often run a little bit worse, have a lot less horsepower if you go way too low, because they have to have a certain minimum, right? But the computers these days can do a lot of adjustments. And some people won't even notice. 30 in town, 60 on the highway, they might not notice any difference at all. Gardening is my passion. Says, is a 2020 Nissan Rogue a good vehicle? It's the first car with 55,000 miles. Well, if you want to have a bad experience with your first car, go right ahead and buy one of those, okay? I just did a video on one of those that only had 15,000 miles on it, and the guy hated the car. He said it shifts like crap, it doesn't have any power, and it didn't get that good gas mileage. He was only getting 30 miles a gallon on a 2022 Nissan Rogue. I get 37 on a 2007 Toyota Matrix that's old as the hills, and that's going 75 miles an hour. So, you know, not that great. And the problem, of course, is they have those crappy CVT transmissions that break. I've seen them break at 60,000 miles or less. I would not buy that car. I wouldn't care what the price is. I don't care. It's only got 55,000 miles. I can guarantee you it's going to fall apart before it's time. Tom Dunnick says, Scotty, did Scion ever correct the oil burning problem with the XB? Thanks. Okay. Well, the problem was that was this four cylinder inline engine. Toyota, of course, made them. Scions were made by Toyota. It's just a stupid name. Name. They meant nothing, right? They didn't build the piston rings right. All right, my grandson has a Toyota Camry with the same engine. It's an 07. Now, after a few years, they stopped making that engine design and they replaced it with a different Toyota four cylinder inline that has no oil burning problems at all. So, yes, Toyota did fix the problem. And for some people, they rebuilt the engines or at least put new piston rings in the things, but they did screw up. They just made the piston rings wrong and they burn a bunch of oil as they age. They could still drive him. He's still driving that thing. Goes to Rhode Island, kind of see him back, just adds oil when it burns. Fills it up with gas checks. He all puts a little oil. It still runs good. So, guys, you says, Scotty, what's your advice for a transmission fluid change in a Ranger with 41,000 miles? My advice is do it now. <laughs> do it every 40, 50,000 miles. Do not have some clown hook up a flush machine. Flushing can destroy him. You put new fluid in and buy the same exact fluid that it came with, the OEM transmission fluid, because when you 
you drain and fill. There's still at least 50% of the fluid left in the transmission torque converter. So you don't want to mix different types of fluids, right? But just do it every 40, 50,000 miles. And my advice, learn how to do it yourself. Watch my videos because I just had a guy the other day. He said, you know, I paid a dealership to change my fluid four times and now I did it myself and it was full of sludge. The fluid was filthy. He said, obviously, they never changed it at all. You got to really do it yourself. You can't trust people. These people lie, cheat, and steal at shops. You don't know what they're going to do. It's easy enough to learn how to do it yourself. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.